and welcome to High School Physics Explained. Do you know what this cord is? It's called a Toslink cable. In essence, it's an optical cable to connect your stereo to speakers, and it works on optical fibers. So if I fire a laser down the end center of my optical cable, I'm going to get, as you can see, light coming out, despite that the cord is really bendy. The reason why this works is because of a concept called total internal reflection. And this is what this video is all about. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give you two demonstrations of total internal reflection taking place. And then I'm going to spend a little time explaining why it occurs. So in my first demonstration, I'm going to use this fish tank of water to demonstrate total internal reflection. So what I have here, of course, is my laser pointer, and I'm going to fire it off at a fairly sharp angle at the edge of the glass. So in this first demonstration, I have a fish tank here filled with water, and I'm going to fire a laser beam through it. And what we're going to see is we're going to see light refracting, but then as it tries to refract out of the water, it reflects. Now, to help us see the laser beam, the laser beam needs to reflect off something. What I've done is I've added a few drops of milk, just a few, and that means the tiny little oil droplets that milk basically is made up of are suspended in the liquid and it's going to allow us to see the laser beam as they reflect of those tiny droplets. When I fire that up like so, I'm going to get the light to refract into the water and then it will refract out. However, at a certain angle, I'm going to find that none of my light reflects out at all. In fact, if you can see clearly what it does, it reflects back into the water. And in fact, if I can get the angle right, I have it reflecting twice, once at the surface of the water and once at the bottom of the water. In essence, it is doing reflection, not refraction. In my second example, I have my laser pointer here and I'm going to fire it into this perspex rod that has been bent. As I fire the light into the perspex, I'm going to find that the light comes out the other end. And we'll turn the light off so that you can see it more clearly. The light is traveling straight, changing direction and coming out the other end. So what's going on? And we'll start just by quickly looking at this animation from FET. And you may be familiar with this animation if you've seen my previous video on refraction. So of course, what we have here is my laser. And when my laser fires light and strikes a medium with a different refractive index, of course, it bends towards the normal. Now we have a little bit of reflection from the surface. So the amount of energy reflecting off plus the amount of energy transmitting through the material must equal the total energy going in. Now let's have a look at it when we flip this situation. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to go not from air to water, but vice versa. We're going to go from water to air. And you can see again that we have light refract. This time, of course, it's bending away from the normal. And there is some reflection at the boundary and there is some refraction going out. In other words, it's transmitting through the air. But what we're really interested in is what happens as I change the angle of incidence. If I decrease the angle, then of course the refraction is smaller away from the normal. But if I increase it, you can see as I move it across, I'm getting this refracted ray approaching the actual surface or the boundary between the water and the air. And it comes a point when that disappears. In other words, the refraction doesn't occur anymore. We only have reflection. And so there is no light leaving, but now we have this ray that is completely reflecting in, and that is total internal reflection. And as long as that angle remains beyond, this angle here is beyond that critical angle, we're going to continue to see total internal reflection. Now the angle at which that occurs does depend on the actual differences. So for example, if I move this to this situation over here and I change the material here to, let's say, glass, you might see that in this case, the point at which I no longer get refraction is at this angle right there. But if I change this back to water, 
you see I have refraction still. So the variation between the refractive indexes determines whether it actually does total interior reflection or not. And an angle at which it does in one medium may not necessarily be true for another situation. Similarly speaking, if I return this back to glass, and of course here I have total internal reflection, and the material now out here is water, the variation will cause it to refract because now we are going from glass to water and the amount at which whether it refracts or not is determined not just by the first medium or the second medium, but the combination. But we need to look at that mathematically. So here I'm going to use my fish tank example again that you saw earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the path of light as it enters the fish tank one of three ways. And so the first path that you're going to see is if my laser light was fired at this angle here. Now what happens, of course, at this point, it will refract towards the normal and then it's going to refract out. And so, of course, you get bending away from the normal. However, if we take it to the other extreme, we have the light entering now at this angle. So, and of course, it will refract towards the normal like so. But now what we get is total internal reflection. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. It's going to strike the boundary at this point and then it will probably refract out that way. So we're getting total internal reflection here, but no total internal reflection here. Now, clearly, there is an example of a light ray where you get the point where that light ray travels along the surface. So we will use our red color here. It enters the medium here. It bends like so towards the normal. And this is the point or the angle at which this light ray doesn't refract out, but it fires right along the surface. Now it actually doesn't do that. It jumps from one to the other, but let's say it sits on this line. What is the angle at which this light ray over here has to arrive at in order to either refract out or not and just do total internal reflection? Well, in order to understand that, we need to look at this from a mathematical perspective. So this is the angle of incidence that we're interested in. And what we need to remind ourselves, of course, is Snell's law. And Snell's law says the N2 over N1 is equal to sine I over sine R. Now, N2 is always the refractive medium that you're going Two. So for our intents and purposes, let's make the refractive index of this substance the one of, let's say, water, and n in this case is equal to 1.33. The refractive index of air is just marginally above 1. A vacuum, of course, is, is 1, but for all intents and purposes, we might as well just call it 1. So now looking at the mathematics, well, the refractive index of where we're going to is one. So we get one divided by the refractive index of the medium I'm coming from. So in this case, it is going to be 1.33. Now that equals sine I over sine R and we want I. So we're going to leave sine I. So we're going to leave sine I here as the numerator. It's the thing that we want to work out. But what is R? Well, in this case, our refractive angle or angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So we get sine 90. Sine 90 is one. So therefore you just get sine I. So in other words, if you want to know the angle at which the substance will allow total internal reflection, then all you need is the refractive index of that substance. Now the angle at which this occurs is called the critical angle. And so we say one divided by the refractive index of the substance we're interested in. And why we say one here is, is when you want to know the critical angle of a substance, you always compare it to a vacuum. So that's going to be one there is equal to sine I. And that is how you work out the critical angle for any substance. And of course, the denser the substance, the smaller the critical angle. And so, for example, water has a reasonably small critical angle, but glass has a smaller critical angle still. And of course, diamond, which has a refractive index of 2.24, has a significantly smaller critical angle. And we'll use that example in a moment to explain something about diamonds. So what about optic fibers? 
Optic fibers allow light to pass through them and it utilizes that concept of total internal reflection. So here's a representation, of course, of my optic fiber. And the question is, is how does light pass through here so that it enters at this end and leaves at the other end and doesn't escape? Well, it's using total internal reflection. So I'm going to have my light ray, of course, entering, let's say, the medium at a slight angle, like so. And of course, what happens here, it bends slightly towards the normal. So it doesn't go straight, it goes slightly towards the normal. Let's say we fire it at this angle. And so it travels in a straight line. Now, at this junction, it would refract out, but if the refractive index is high enough, what's going to happen, it's going to arrive at an angle greater than the critical angle. So it's going to reflect back in, then it's going to, let's say, in our case, strike, let's say, at this junction over here. And then at this junction, this angle again is greater than the critical angle. And so it's going to reflect back. And then again, it will reflect back and it'll keep doing this as long as the angle is greater than the critical angle. And then when it gets to this junction, it does arrive at an angle that is less than the critical angle. In this case, it's going to bend away from normal. So it won't do in that direction, it'll bend slightly this way and it'll go in that direction. And that's why the light, for example, here, why it comes out. It's actually following a straight path and zigzags through, through the material because the angles are always greater than the critical angle for that substance. So to summarize, let's quickly look at an example of a diamond and how total internal reflection helps us understand why diamonds sparkle. So as you know, a diamond is cut in a particular way and it produces all these colors. And why is that? Well, it's simply due to total internal reflection. So here is a simplified diagram I have of my diamond. And what I have here is the light ray entering at a certain facet. And of course, we have the light that refracts towards the normal. But the thing is, is that light is made up of multiple colors and different wavelengths of light or different frequency of light refract slightly differently. So what I have here is the red is refracting the least and violet is refracting the most. As you can see, the path of the red causes it to re totally internally reflect at this facet here, again at this facet over here, and it comes out over here. If you follow the path of the violet light, you can see it refracts more initially. It then follows the path of total internal reflection before it comes out at the top and refracts out. But what we now get is this dispersion going on over here. If red's on one end and violet's on the other, and so you're going to get a rainbow effect. And that is reason why the diamond sparkle. Now, if we then examine, let's say, what is the refractive index of diamond, and we can just quickly do the mathematics, the refractive index of diamond is equal to 2.4. 1 over 2.4 is equal to sine i. And when I rearrange that, I get a critical angle of 24.6 degrees. Now, if I compare that to glass, glass has a refractive index of 1.5. And if I redo the calculation, the critical angle for glass ends up being 41.8 degrees. And so where the light refracts and whether or not totally internally reflects or not will be vastly different with a glass gem than I would have, let's say, with a diamond gem. A diamond specialist would certainly be able to tell the difference between glass and diamond by simply examining how light behaves as it enters and leaves the diamond. I hope that helps you understand total internal reflection. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Remember to hit the bell so that you get updates. Bye for now.